Hey guys, welcome back to Mercury. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these really cool uh, boss relief or cameos, however you want to call them. Uh, I think they're really cool just for like 3D printing. You could also see and see them technically because they are reliefs. Um, but I also made this one and I've just been using them for coins because they're just like really cute designs and I got a resin printer. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first step here is going to be select an image. Uh, I just started off with this picture of my niece, but I also really like using the keywords like boss relief and cameo. They seem to work really well in mid journey. And then it's really important that you upscale it. I did the upscale 4x um, and then you can just save the image and then we can move on to the next step. Next up, we're going to convert our image into a high quality depth map. And for this, we're going to be used this uh, GitHub script called Tiling Zoe Depth. And basically, if you used Zoe Depth by itself, it probably wouldn't give you the resolution that you're looking for. But using this tiling method, it gets a lot higher resolution. Just as a comparison, I'm going to show you what the results will look like if you use something like Photoshop Beta or Midas. In this case, I'll use Photoshop Beta because it's a lot easier. Uh, but if you go to Filter, Neural Filters, and then if you don't have it already, go ahead and download the depth blur, click on that. And then I have to move myself for this, uh, output depth map only. And that gets you a depth map. Um, the only problem with this is that it is technically a depth map. It's just not very good. Like it's okay quality, but it's not going to get you a really good cameo or boss relief in blender. Once we're, once we get to that step. So for that reason, we're using tiling Zoe depth, but because we're using this script, we don't need Photoshop beta or anything like that. So go back to this GitHub page and click on this V3 link. Uh, and then all you have to do is copy to drive and then press control F9. And make sure you have your image as a JPEG because I found that a PNG will throw an error. So go ahead and choose your files. I'm going to choose the original image and the mid journey image. Alright, so those finished uploading and now it's just downloading all the dependencies. Uh, the whole process takes like maybe 15 minutes, so go make yourself a cup of coffee and then come back and it should be finished. Alright, so execution has completed for both of those and it's just downloading them. And there we go. And then as a comparison, I'm going to show you both the original depth map and then this tiled Zoe depth one. So here I have the two side by side. Uh, on the left, you have the one from Photoshop. On the right, you have the one from Tiled Zoe Depth. And oh my gosh, you can see the difference. Um, the one from Photoshop is inverted, so you just press Control I in Photoshop and you would get the same, it would look the same to compare. But you can see so much more detail in the background, even in the mouth, in the eyes, like there is just, it's so much better. So that's why we're using this. The next step is going to be to hop into Blender and we'll just create a new scene. Press A and then delete to get rid of everything here. Um, and then we'll do Shift A and add a new plane. We'll go here into this little uh, wrench icon for the modifiers, add modifier. Under generate, we're gonna go for subdivision surface. We want simple, bump that up to six and apply that. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing again, but we'll just do four. Uh, so that's 10 subdivisions total. And apply. And now the magic part. We'll add our modifier. We'll go to deform, displace. Click new for the texture. Click on this icon on the right. Open. And now we can go ahead and find our depth map. All right, and it looks a little messed up. Just That's just how it looks. Uh, but 
if we press S and then Z and move our mouse, we can kind of scale that so it looks a little bit less messed up. And that's looking pretty good so far. Um, it is a little bit like jagged and like voxely. So what I'm going to do is add another modifier. So we'll go back to modifiers, add, and we want smooth. We'll up the factor a little bit and the iterations. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, and then I'm just going to scale this up in the Z a little bit more, just so that we get more like definition down in the base. Uh, then we can go ahead and apply these modifiers. We'll go into edit mode and then we'll go to uh, select, select all by trait, non-manifold. We'll E to extrude. Z to make it in the Z axis and just go down a little bit. Uh, then press F to fill it. And that is it. So we can press tab to get out of edit mode. And now we can go ahead file export as an STL file. Um, so this is Penny. Oops. Uh, this is Cameo Penny. Now we can hop into Mesh Mixer. And this is gonna take a second because it's got a lot of geometry. Uh, but look at her, she's so cute. We'll go ahead and we'll try a plain cut, see if this is level enough. The answer is no, it's not level, so that's okay. If you're having a problem like this, uh, where you're trying to plane cut and it's just kind of like not deep enough in some places, but too deep in other places, um, what you can do is actually remove the background of the depth map before you put it into Blender. So let's do that real quick. All right, so we got rid of the backgrounds. Let's head back into Blender. And I'm just gonna undo until we get our modifiers back. There we go. Now let's take a look at this texture and let's grab our new one. There we go. And now it has a totally flat back and it's gonna be a much easier to plane cut. So now what we can do is export that again and make sure that it applies to modifiers in the geometry panel. We go back in here. Give Mesh Mixer about 20 years to load up your STL file just because of all the subdivisions we did. There we go. We'll go to edit, plain cut. That's not what I wanted to do. Down here. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just going to transform this and flatten it out a little bit just now that we've gotten that done. So there is a little hole here. So let's bring that down a little bit. There we go. Now we can transform it just so it's a little bit more coin like and less in your face, you know? Except. And now we can export that. Now we can hop back into Blender and I just so happen to already have a coin file. And I have this STL in here. Uh, it says a penny girl, rotundus chungus. This is from my brother because 
that's his cap. So we'll get rid of that and we will import our newest member of the family. There she is. Let's so press S and shift Z just to scale it in the X and Y. And then G, shift Z to just move it in the X and Y. Whoa. That looks pretty good. That looks, it's almost centered, it's good enough. Um, and then we will just sync that down into our coin. And there we have it. Now we have a customized Penny Girl Rotundus Chungus coin with a full uh, boss relief of her. And remember, this all just came from this one image of her. So uh, that is the power of AI today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to help as best as I can. Um, but have a great day. Happy printing.